Kristen Havens. This poem is Landscape with Houses. This was my village, the little church, the red-roofed houses, and the stray cats along the riverbanks, trees casting shadows of shifting beings onto grass and sky. This was my home, eyes everywhere. This was my life, the fire sky, dark wood, and muddy bottom, and the man at the edge looking back at me, dodging his own reflection. Okay, uh, with poetry, it's often something visual for me, either something I see while I'm outdoors walking, or in a museum, or an art book. Often it's an effort to pin down a feeling that's difficult to describe, and in the attempt to do so, it just feels natural to me to work in metaphor or to talk around the feeling until I can somehow replicate it with imagery or sound. Well, this poem was inspired by an early landscape painting by Kandinsky that I saw in an old art history book, and it's, it's actually hard to find that painting now online but I think it's part of one of his 1908 series on Munich. Uh, I remember seeing this picture and trying to inhabit the mindset of someone who would stand on the other side of a river and look back at their city like that, who might feel a little bit apart from things and see their urban world with some pride, but also a bit of paranoia, maybe claustrophobia, who might see it as a dark and moody place that's beautiful, but maybe a little confining for an artist, like it might be hard to find a place to be alone and unobserved. With something like this, when I'm inspired by an image that I've seen, uh, generally I'll free write whatever comes to my mind, whether that image, uh, whatever it makes me feel or what it suggests to me. Uh, with poetry, often the line breaks are there from the beginning, but sometimes it's just one big column of words and I'll add the line breaks and later when I revise it. Well, for me, writing poetry is a little bit more uh, sort of a trance-like activity than some other forms of writing. Um, it comes pretty quickly when I get in the right headspace. So I think a big part of writing poetry is finding that point of entry into that creative state. Um, people find it in different ways. Sometimes I start by sound. If I put two words together that don't uh, necessarily normally belong together, but they create an interesting sound together, uh, sometimes it's image-based, though. Uh, for example, in my poem, that phrase near the end, fire sky, uh, that was an example of both. Uh, they share a common sound, but when you put those two words together, they describe the sky in a way that's more evocative than just saying red. Uh, it kind of implies heat, oppression, panic, urgency. Um, so I feel like getting familiar with words, what they mean, what they imply, what they evoke, and how they sound uh, when you speak them aloud, that's, that's a big uh, part of writing poetry for me. This poem is several years old, and I think maybe the first draft just took me a few minutes, and then I probably went back and revised it on another day. And then the editor for the magazine had a few suggestions and worked with me to implement those, but they were very minor suggestions. So I would say I, I took three sessions to write this. Some, some though will sit around on your computer or in a notebook for years before you can figure out what the final form will be. Uh, for me, no, uh, I'm not a teacher. Um, but I do write and I, I read. And I, I think it takes quiet and focus to really absorb a poem properly. Most of the time when I read, I need to read one multiple times to appreciate it on all the levels, visual, sound, the meaning, and maybe what the, the poet was feeling while writing the poem. Um, but I don't pick it apart. I just read it and I reread it and I let it settle. Uh, I think the understanding of a poem can take time. Uh, you water it with your attention and then it blooms in your mind over a period of hours or days. Uh, but I don't try too hard to work it like a puzzle or a math problem. I just kind of let it soak in. Uh, 
Oh, there's so many people on Twitter. <laughs> That's a really good way. But literary magazines too. So, uh, and it's it's very easy to find those on the internet. Um, or there are various websites if you are beginning as a writer, and you're looking for things to read or places to submit your work. There's a site called Duotrope.com. That's just a database full of hundreds and hundreds of literary magazines but you can also just search for literary magazines that phrase on twitter and you'll find just as many and you'll find a lot of people sharing their work there too i really like the unexpected and revelations and i have noticed a trend where um, a lot of people will write a poem where it's about something one thing that's very concrete maybe even straightforward, and then the last couple of lines will reveal the meaning of the metaphor or the story that we've just been shown. And I, I really like that effect. There's a poem by Jericho Brown called The Trees uh, that at first seems very simple and straightforward about three crepe myrtles in his yard, but then the last few lines, uh, he kind of changes it and you begin to understand that it's those trees mean something much more significant to him. Uh, I really like that effect. Uh, another poem, I don't know if we have time, but another poem I really like a lot is called The Understudy by a poet named Bridget Lowe. And it appeared in the New Yorker magazine a few years ago. It's a very short poem about a child riding her bike while praying about Nancy Drew. And it has this undercurrent of rage and danger to it, like the child is looking for an opportunity to escape and maybe prove herself. And that juxtaposition of unlike things different elements um, is jolting and it reminded me of what it's like to be a child living in a fantasy world that you can only fully indulge when you're on your own in the world and maybe being a little bit reckless. Uh, so those are two poems that, that came to mind for me. Um, <laughs> I'd like to give a shout out to you, Todd, for hosting this program. I think it's really wonderful. I watched all the other videos. And that is another great way to get to know new poets. Um, I was not familiar with their work, but I was really impressed by all of them. So um, yeah, I encourage people to watch all the videos.